behold how good it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity, for it's like the first thorn upon the head and run down upon the beard, even here on the beard. It went down to the skirts of his garment, that to do a Hermon, that to do that descend upon the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord commanded a blessing, even life forevermore. So this psalm is kind of like that some short psalm, but we need to kind of learn how to commit some of this to our hearts and minds. Today's blessing uh, is a lesson that, as I said to us earlier, that we kind of need to take a good close look into the book of Psalms. Psalms, the book of Psalms is broken down into five books, five books. If you got a pretty good Bible, just turn to chapter one of Psalms one, excuse me, and you'll see that's where the beginning of the first book of the five books that we have in the book of Psalms. Psalms 1 through 41 is our first section of book one. Psalms 41 through 42 through 73 is our second Psalm uh, 73 through 90 is our third and Psalm 107 through 150 is our fourth book. Today's Psalm, the 100 Psalms, is found in, in the fourth of the five books. Many scholars consider this to be the section of the psalm that is in the night as now psalm, where the psalm writer said, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generation before the mountain was brought forth, or even made it from the earth and the world everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Here, finally, the problem presents in the first three books is it stand. A human king may disappoint us, but God is our world's king, and he reigns forever. He is a king who through Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt. In light of book four of the Psalm, has some things of the Mosaic favor. Notice the superscription of Psalm 90 again. Uh, Tributes to Moses. Book four ends with two views of the wilderness. One, uh, and God's faithfulness to the covenant promise. While the latter is about Israel's sinfulness and failure as we are to obey God, to obey God. The 100 number of Psalms is a big point that speak to the proper response to the people of God, to him and the ancient Israelites. May have sung this particular song during the feast of the end gathering, all which was known as the feast of the tabernacle where all of the Jews would leave, as I said to us on Sunday, come from wherever they were to, to Jerusalem for the one of the feasts. The animals, the, the annual seven days observation celebrated the fall harvest. You city folk don't know nothing about the fall harvest and at the end of the year, we gather stuff up and et cetera, et cetera. The, the organizing of this 100 song in the variation of the standard psalm structure, known as a hymn or psalm praise. The standard structure consists of a psalm on a praise, the Lord followed by reason of the praise, the type of psalms which appeared back in Exodus 15, as Miriam 
and Moses and the other women saying, when God opened the Red Sea and they came across on dry land, they sang praises uh, to the Lord for his goodness. Maybe they had a portion of Psalm 3, one of Psalm 3, which says, uh, Know ye that the Lord is God. Is God. He is, he. is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into peace with thanksgiving and to his school be praised. Be thankful unto him and praise his name. I'm more close by saying, we do know that is those of us who believe it. We do know that the Lord is good. We do know that his mercy is everlasting. And we do know that his truth is unto all generations. Although Psalm 100 does not explicitly celebrate God as king, it nevertheless shares some of the affirmatives and other types of some known as the divine kingship or some such as so it sounds speaks of the Lord rule over the cosmos or over the world. Awesome. Many psalms have superscription. These often include information regarding the historical circumstance of the psalm, the names of the writers, the superscription of Psalm 100 does not indicate the author's identity. We don't know exactly who wrote it. The date of its composure is also unclear. Don't know exactly when it was written. Allusion to the temple and structure uh, would, would be appropriate in both the pre-exile, that is before the destruction of Solomon Temple in 586 BC, and I'll say it to us several times, uh, that was when the southern tribe fell. The northern tribe fell in 722 BC. And it's because the kings did that which was evil in the sight of God, and the kings caused the people to sin. However, given the contents of, of Book 4, in which Psalm 100 is located, we can surmise that this particular psalm was meant to be associated more closely with Moses than with other writers or prophets. Psalm 90. Compare Psalm 100, verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Thank you. Yes. And we, when we come before the Lord, we need to come to the Lord being happy to be able to do what we are doing. One, a call to all that we should come with joy. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. The command is to make a joyful noise appear in exactly the same Hebrew phrasing in only two other places here and in Psalm 98. To those we can compare Psalm 66 1 and Psalm 95 1, which or similar. This is a call to unhindrance. Praise. Thanking God for all that he has done, all that he is doing. You need to kind of wake up with a prayer in your heart. The Hebrew word behind the translation, noise. Sometimes most of our churches are too quiet. Shout. I know, I know, I know. 
we have we have about three cents worth of education, and many of us think that it's not appropriate to save man and to get happy and shout sometime. Somebody said once about believers. He was a love of football. And in the church, preacher got to preach the choir started saying, and we staff started having the glorious time. It said, he, they, she said, does it take all of that to be a believer? That same fella went on to his football game. And when his team scored, he was one of the first one jumped up. He was all that noise. Does it really take? All of that. What are you doing? He was excited about what was going on. Such shouts should be accomplished by the clapping of our hand, the singing, and using instruments. Make it a joyful noise to the Lord. The Lord has never referred to the wish of Prince of Royal Lambton and some we are studying. Even so, the call match the worshipful equivalence of making fanfare for a king, as 102 says. Serve the Lord with gladness. <laughs> know ye that the Lord is God. It is God. We found out in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it's God that have made us and not we ourselves. And in Genesis 2, we find that he formed us out of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into our nostrils the breath of life and we became living so. This is the first of four appearance in the Psalm of one of five verses of the divine name Yahweh, identified in the English translation as Lord. This could just be the writer's preferred method of referring to God, or it could be that the summit used this designation specifically to show that all people will know God by name and have greater knowledge of him and what he is. Our God, our God is a strong God. Our God is a mighty God. And we need to do it all in, throughout all of our land. We need to learn how to praise God. The word land in this context refers to the earth. The word can also refer to Pacific nation or territory. When you with parallel turn to speak of such groups, sometimes the devil uses will refer to both. Okay. So we know exactly where you are. This flexibility remarks is given. In them, it's kind of ambiguous, not quite where it ought to be. Assuming that this addresses for people everywhere, I'm, and I, I want to say that we see God's concern not for just a few, but we see God's concern for all humanity, even those who are not. Praise him at first, whatever nation that is. And we do have some nations that don't know the Lord in the point of our sin. But if they never come out of our sins and accept God, God will accept him. Um, all nations, God want all nations to come to know that the Lord would offer thy praise to him. This theme complements the Morphet of the Israel pro proclaiming the Lord's name among the nation and his reign over 
old nation. And he says to us in verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. I've got to be an old man, but I'm still excited. Every Sunday morning, every time my chance I get to serve the Lord with gladness. Given that this song is associated with Psalm 90, Lord, thou has been, we kind of surmise that the writer alluded to the Exodus here. Serving the Lord, therefore, suggests a contrast between Israel's service to God and the nation's services to Pharaoh, whereas the nation's service to Pharaoh was in chapter book Exodus, as they began to increase the task, the heart mass upon them, they cried out unto the Lord and Moses was there as to deliver from him. And then after we serve the Lord with gladness, we did for his presence with singing. Said to us Sunday, what I said, what Dr. John Brooks said to me back in the 70s. Brother Orange, I envy you. Uh, black folk, why, brothers? All of y'all can sing us, no doubt. All of us can't sing, but we all try to make an attempt to sing. Amen. All of us can't sing, and all of us can't keep time and dance. Think I'm wrong? Let's do a little chicken around. And maybe you might be in that group that can <laughs> that cannot sing. Come before his presence with singing. Throughout the centuries, the people of God have experienced where they have used of, of song. Israel sang in a celebration of thy rescue at the Red Sea. On one side, their rose up was closing in on them. The people began to murmur. God asked them, what's that in your hand? That was the rod that he had used when he first began to turn into a serpent. He touched it again, turned back into the rod. He did various things with it, and he hits it out over the Red Sea. The waters congealed on both sides. And the people of God, Walked across on dry land. That's another terminology you see the folk don't understand. Well, water being when it first when you first think it dried up, but if you start walking on it, you can make water start coming up again. Throughout the centuries, the people of God had experience with weather of of sun. David had issued instruction for leading Israel and praising for God. All the wondrous work. You remember in the book of Kings, when David was able to defeat the Philistines, singing and dancing and praising God was one of the things that he did. Even though he was criticized for it. The Christians are saying, to one another in Ephesians and in Colossians. In all of these instances, the people of God could declare with David, God has put a new song in my mouth. I didn't always know how to sing Amazing Grace. I had something else there for that. Thank God for taking some of these songs they got now, these young folk got now, is so vulgar that if you're a Christian, you don't even want to listen to them. You're not letting on singing them. I heard my daughter once had shit. I, I got in her car and she, boy, there's some stuff that's going on. I come back, I said, Felice, 
what in the world is this you got going on in your car? Oh, daddy, I didn't mean for you to hear me. Hear that? Well, and I'm talking about you, you would, I can't even say what I what they were saying. Not now, not anyway. And uh, they was having a bowl over it, rocking and jumping and going on. I can't even see it now. But thank God for being uh, so good. Verse uh, three. No ye that the Lord, he is God. This is the fourth command of this song. Occupy the central position. It provides a rationale for all other communication. The word no in this context suggests a profound acknowledgement above mere intellect precept. There are just some things that you need to know and know that you know for yourself. And one of those, one of those first of is you need to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you've been saved by the grace of God, and that God has given you a new lease on life. You need to know that. And if you don't know that, you're going to be in doubt two more for the rest of your life. Old hymn we used to sing, don't I heard nobody in and newest race is saying, you've seen it at, at bright stuff. One thing I know, sure been born again. That's Mississippi stuff, Joe. One thing I know, sure been born. We don't even say that in Louisiana now, but I guess it's because. I guess because we don't know that. I guess. <laughs> you need to know for your yes. self. Amen. <laughs> we need to know that God is, that the Lord is God. We need to know that he's a great God. We need to know that he is the God of all God. We need to know that the Lord not only is the Lord, but he is a God that is above all gods. Hallelujah. Who is, who are, who, who we are? It is he, it is God <clears throat> that has made us and not we ourselves. In Genesis 1, 26, 27, you see that a council cold in heaven and the council said let us make man in our image and after our likeness in Genesis 2 9 you see where God formed him out of the dust of the earth then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. And because of that, in Romans 10, 9, maybe 10, 10, 9, and 10, know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. And into his gates with thanksgiving, and to his coat we're praising, be thankful unto him and bless his name. When I hear this days of reservation, you say, For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Romans 10 17, Isaiah says, But Lord, they have not all obeyed the gospel. We still wonder now, I wonder now on a Sunday morning, Lord, who believe the report? 3B, who we are. 
it's quite similar in this regard. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pastors and the sheep, people of the, and the sheep of his hand. Jesus says to us in John 10, I am the good shepherd and the, sh the shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. That's what the Lord did for us. And he also had it made known that if I lay it down, I can pick it up again. Nobody can take it from me. I lay it down and I'll pick it up again. That's exactly what happened in and on Calvary. He laid his life down. John 18, 34, he says, for this cause came I into the world unto this end that I was born. Amen. This metaphor of the whole nation of Israel as the Lord's sheep draws an ancient image. Kings were monarchs and shepherds. God is often referred to, alluded to, as the shepherd. Thank God. And those of us who the Lord have allowed a call to be pastors, we are to be as shepherds over the sheep. Being God's shepherd suggests that the people of Israel could feel confident in their relationship to God, but be humble concerning the way of that ability. Like sheep, Israel was weak, vulnerable, and needed here. However, they belonged to and were valued by the Lord God, the true and the ultimate shepherd. Thank God. See, sheep need somebody. Sheep are not like other animals. Sheep don't fight. Sheep lay down their lives. Some of us, I know, we, we got goat mentality. But we need to learn to be how to be good sheep for the Lord. When they're referring to humanity in general, Old Testament is in particular, the text before us highlight both God's identity as creator, the worship was identity as created being the implication of a found its effects to negate any notion of human self-sufficient. Neither humanity in general nor Old Testament Israel in particular came into being by self-sufficiency. God is the author of life. God is both the giver and the sustainer of life. And he's the one who created the church is also the creator of everything. John 1, 1 through 3 says, and the word was made flesh and dwell among us. And we beheld the glory as of the only the glory of the begotten, son of God who is full of grace and mercy. And in 14 it says, and the word was made flesh and lived or dwell among us. The church of God's flock and its elders are called to care for and to protect as it does in Acts 20 and 28. Before moving on, we should pause to note, Lord Almighty, that the affirmation made in Psalm 103, B, echoes the two halves of the stand, two, three. It is God that has made us 
and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Therefore, we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his course with praises and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Every night, you ought to go to Kneebone Station. That is, get on your knees and pray and thank God for another day. I know some of us many times, we've already crawled in the bed, watching commercial with one eye, trying to pray with the other eye closed. And if you don't watch yourself, brother Stan, when you wake up, the program that you call yourself watching is and come to an end. You don't even know what'll happen. So you need to kind of ease out of your bed. Get on your knees and thank God for another day. Somebody said in the word of an old song, it's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. I'm so glad to be here. The dedication of Solomon's temple took place during the Feast of the Tabernacle. The association of the dedication with the feast may provide contents for illusion of the temple ground here. Furthermore, gates and courtyards are mentioned together dozen of times in the Old Testament in that regard. The gates refer to the entrance of the temple ground. The courts are the area in the perimeters. The complex included two temple courts, another court and an outer court of great court. The great court was evidence it was in an outer court surrounding the entire temple complex. It is into this large outer court the summit envisioned the congregation entering. Those approaching God in the temple courts need to bring appropriate need to bring appropriate, need to bring appropriate offering. Offering. First Corinthians 16, 1, 16 says, now concerning the collection of the saints, Upon the first day of the week, which is we call Sunday, let every one of you lay aside in store as God has prospered you. I don't know about you, but I be trying to get in a hurry to put my little tights together and thank God for being so good to me. Tell you what I found out. I can do more with the nine in God by ten than I can with the ten tenth without God. Then all we know it, but he clears us the three ten tells us when we don't do that, we are cursed with a curse and don't even know why we can't keep some money up. Oh yeah, now don't 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 get me wrong. The Lord lets sinners have money just like he does a believer. Because the record is he reigns on the just just as he does the unjust. So God is good to both of us. Both of us. Then verse 5, for it says, For the Lord is good.
his mercy or everlasting. How good is God? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, for by grace, that's the goodness of God, are we saved through faith. And that's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. You ain't got nothing to go over and boast about. All you got to do is accept God's gift of grace and then comply with what God said and shout with the summary that said, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This verse, this verse often motivates the for praising God. The simple affirmation that the Lord is good is used four times in the book of Psalms here, and in Psalm 34, 8, Psalm 135, 3, and in Psalm 145, 9. To each to these can be added Psalm 106, Psalm 107, Psalm 118, 1, 29 and 32, which all future descendants all give thanks unto the Lord for he's good. His mercy. Oh, yes. And I told you all that mercy is a judicial act on the part of God. For by God know that we are guilty, yet he gives us another chance. I don't know about you, but I'm eternally grateful to the Lord for mercy. Glad that God, when I get on my knees, I ask that to the Lord, Lord, thank you for not dealing with me according to divine justice, but give me your grace and your mercy instead. Most of us talk about, we don't want no justice. We want God's grace and God's mercy. Uh, it's rooted in this primary uh, expression. And God's truth endures to all generation. Truth. What is it? Jesus says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set or make you free. That is the only thing that's going to help you is truth. No need me telling nobody that I got a head full of hell when the truth of the matter is it's gone, Stan. <laughs> it ain't going to come back. <laughs> I can do all that other stuff I want to, but the true matter is, it has gone. God's long-standing relationship with his people demonstrate his reliable goodness, merciful, and truthfulness, pairing in the word translated to mercy and truth occurs frequently in the psalm. Those echoes of the Old Testament fundamental description of the laws of Israel is seen in Exodus 34. The law dealing with Israel proved to be more than sentimental impulse. God Almighty, that could easily have been faithful into the covenant. He made with them, he made with our ancestors. Israel had experienced the Lord reliability and faithfully a long time, a long time. And the people could move into that future assured of his continued presence. They could know that God's acts of grace were not the product of the divine will. We can trust in the Lord because he is constant. And his gracious purposes 
or used for reliability. Indeed, Jesus is faithful. Why? Because and feels like the joy is fitting into those who experience God and described in the Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praises. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I'm so glad that the Lord is good and his mercy and do it forever. I'm glad that God's goodness, like his love and his mercy, does not run out. He is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Let me add, yes, even to a messed up, confused, sinful generation like the one that we now live where people no longer are teaching our children to love the Lord and love one another, doing all kinds of damnable things. But thank God, God is still good. And if you could just own the Lord to turn away from your sin and come to the Lord, he's standing today with outstretched arms said, come unto me, all you that labor that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I'm meek, and I'm low of heart, and you'll find rest unto your soul. God bless us. Heaven smile upon us. I would tonight that those of you who are listening to my weak voice would take another look at your life and ask yourself some serious question to yourself about yourself. Where do I stand in and with the love of God? Thank God for Jesus who came to give us that chance that we might have a right to the tree of life. Let us repeat the watchword. I'm persuaded by the teaching of the blessed Bible, by daily reading and meditation and communion with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to live an upright Christian life, practice this teaching in my dealing with my fellow man, to dedicate my talent, give up my time, influence, and mean to teach and spread the Christian religion at home and abroad. To win souls through personal service for Christ. To encourage and help in the enlistments of young people in Christian work. And to make my home a center of Christian light and love. To these ends, I pledge to devote myself and seek divine aid and guidance daily that I may become a living witness and a bright and shining light for my Lord. 
Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless us. Real good. Let us go back and look at this again and start working on ourselves that we can be able to praise God with joy. Amen. Tell folk, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you like Weather B told me one time. Love you, Pastor. Ain't nothing you can do, buddy. I love y'all. Y'all looking so pretty. Ain't nothing you can do, buddy. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now, on to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us folded before the throne of grace with exceeding great joy, to whom no wise God our Father. Glory, honor, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. If you love the Lord, say amen. Glad to see you stand, man. You're looking good. I miss you, boy. Sunday, I miss you. I hope you miss me like I miss you. I so miss you. Thank the Lord for us, Sunday. Bless us. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, I'm Love you, you Back in Louisiana, girl. Yeah. <laughs> you have a blessed week, Pastor. Bless you, John. Bless you, man. Hope that I said something tonight to help somebody. Take another man. look at this. You did. Amen. Xavier, glad you to always share. Do. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right. Bless us. And good evening to all of y'all. Bless you. God bless us. Ever smile upon us.